you know, it's interesting, you know, this issue of homophobia. I mean, it, you know, it was something that at the time when I'd watched it, I thought nothing of it, but then it kind of, you know, hearing it later on, it was like, oh, wow, this actually was a problem for people. Is when Michael Sam actually did get drafted. And they had just kind of the special moment, a real moment that any other player would have had with any other person, whether it was, if it was their girlfriend, where, you know, he kissed his partner. Yep. And, and to me, I was like, oh, wow, that's just like, God, I mean, the tears, I, I can't imagine I would cry if I got drafted by the NFL. That's, a, that's an opportunity of, the, of a lifetime. But I mean, it was so interesting because I saw it as a moment that was just so natural and, and, and just so human. And that's what really, like, you know, I was like, wow, that, that's really cool. And, and, I, and I love that, you know, they just let it play. And, and you know, they, they didn't do any, you know, they didn't do anything. But hearing later on how people were like, oh, you know, well, why do they got to show that? They don't have to show that. They can, you know, you know, why don't they turn the cameras away or, or, or move to a different scene? It's just like, but why? Why should they have to? Why should, he, why should, why should the NFL have to? Why should, why should it be any different for him than for any other player that gets drafted? I mean, that, that's, you know, that's, he was sharing that moment with the person that he wanted to share it with, along with his family. It's something that was something that he'd worked his entire life for. So I thought it was interesting. And, it, and, it, and it's sad because it always does remind me that, as, again, like I said before, as far as we come, there still are issues surrounding uh, that particular topic. And I was lucky enough to be connected with Dan Barry, Pulitzer Prize winning writer for the New York Times, who uh, took the time uh, through very famous people, Bill Russell, Steve Nash, uh, David Stern, the commissioner of the NBA, to tell my story, because nobody knew who I was. And the goal there was really to do, get in front of kids who were experiencing what I was experiencing, the idea that you can succeed because of who you are, not in spite of who you are. And in our business, uh, in male team sports, this has been a very, very difficult conversation to have. And the goal was simply to have that conversation. Before me, there were no out athletes that anyone knew of. Basically, everyone came out after you finished playing and would take, a, take the team out to coffee and be like, oh, by the way, I've been dating a girl for three years. Or two teammates dated and no one even knew about it. Or if you knew about it, you kind of just ignored it and pretend that it, pretended that it wasn't happening. So I didn't come out to my team until sophomore year, and it w there wasn't a change in culture of my team. It was just the amazing supportive community I, I had from the greater Stanford community gave me the strength to and help strength and confidence to feel comfortable enough to go and tell my team regardless of what their reaction was going to be. My family has been, has been involved with baseball and softball forever, like um, since I was four and my sisters all, um, since they were four, we all played baseball and softball at a local park. So um, over the past 13 years, that has become our life. Like our family just revolves around that sport. I really missed being able to play a sport that I fell in love with, um, but I realized it was either I play a sport that I love or I choose my safety, you know? And I, ha I had to make that decision and I don't think well, I don't think anyone should be able, I mean, should be forced to make that, make, make that decision, um, especially a youth. Awareness is how you move, thing, move, move the ball forward, is awareness and, and, you know, letting people know, like, there's nothing to be worried about. I'm a human being just like you're a human being. We do all the same things. So, you know, treat me how you would like to be treated. And, and that's what you strive to do. And that's our, that is the gay agenda right there to be treated the same way you would treat anyone else, with a sort of human dignity and the recognition, the ability to be fully who we are, which means yes, in a moment of great celebration and elation, we will kiss the person who we love, uh, just like anyone else would, and to have that not be remarkable. At some point, we're gonna have that day, we're not there yet, you know, and our work and your work is about coming to that day at some point. Mm -hmm.